Hey everybody, this is Braxton with Braxton Bruce Photography. And before we get into the topic today, I just want to say, if you're a police officer that kills people with a smile on your face, screw you, you make me sick. Today I want to talk to you about how to get commercial photography work. I received this question from someone and I thought, hey, instead of just sending in a message, maybe I'll make a video. So, without further ado, let's talk about it. I don't know how to get more work. If I did, I would get more work. The majority of my living comes from full-time employment. I work for a company, Lifetime Products. I go there every day almost. And I, now that we're in quarantine, and I do photography for that company. Now, occasionally I do get clients on the side that come and ask me to do things. And uh, I've had periods of time where I was not employed full time, when freelance work was all that I had. And, and I have made extensive efforts to get more of that kind of work, especially when I was not employed full-time. Sometimes when you're employed full-time and you get a lot of work on the side, it can actually be a problem because then you don't have time for your family. And it's hard to justify because if you already make good money in your job, then it doesn't really make sense to sacrifice time with your family just to make some extra money that you don't really need. So right now, I pretty much only take jobs on the side that are extraordinary. If I get something that is either a kind of work that I've always wanted to do or a job that's really big that stretches sort of what I've done and would be really great to show for uh, career growth, then I take those jobs. But I'm not constantly shooting freelance work because I like my kids and I like my wife and I want to spend some time with them. But I can talk to you about how I've gone about getting the work that I do get and uh, that will kind of explain why I turned down a lot of the work that I'm offered. The short answer to how to get more work is to put yourself everywhere. There's not a certain source, a single website that has brought me all of the best work. Uh, one of the last jobs that I shot was in the thousands of dollars. It came to me by referral. so. That's a matter of building relationships with people, being good to them, and gaining their loyalty. So that's really important, and honestly, I think that might be the most important way. When I was in college, I was not very social. I, I was focused mostly on trying to master the craft and get my career going, and I didn't really make a lot of friends in my department or in the design department. My advice to you, especially if you're in college now, is to make friends especially with designers because they are the people who are going to be hiring you later probably other photographers will also refer you when either they're too busy or they're unqualified or when they receive uh, an ask that doesn't match the kind of work that they want to do but they know that that's your kind of work I've gotten a lot of jobs that way um, another job that I got recently that was twice as valuable as that job came to me through an online photographer finding service. Now, that's rare and that's unusual. Uh, and that wasn't workbook and it wasn't, you know, any of these big ones. It was one of the weird ones that <laughs> I think it was findaphotographer.com, something like that. You just never know. So this particular creative director happened to just think, well, I need to find a photographer and he didn't really know how to go about it and so he used whatever tool came up in Google for him. Now that's not as common with people who regularly hire photographers. They're gonna have a preferred website that's curated with some really great photographers and most of those kind of services require you to pay thousands and thousands of dollars just to have your portfolio listed on their site and then if you want any marketing services provided by them it costs even more. So. I have explored those and I've, I've utilized one of them at one point and I really didn't get much work from it. And so at this point, I'm finding I'm getting a good balance of work and life by just using my website. The source that has brought me work the most consistently has been my website. So I think this is key. If you can spend some time on your website every now and again 
improving your SEO, making sure you've got tags and keywords, and you've got plenty of content and text that are related to what you're trying to provide, then that's gonna be one of the best resources for you to find work. If you're looking for full-time work, full-time employment with a company, again, your website's gonna be number one because at that point, you're either working through connections, which you can do on LinkedIn. Uh, people will post that they're looking for someone and you can say, hey, I'd love to talk with you about that. And you can have a call. But whether it's that situation or a regular application that you're submitting, you're gonna need to show them your work and your website better be awesome. It better be perfect. Your work better be tight. It better be something you can be proud of and confident showing. And that's really gonna be uh, one of the best ways that you can market yourself is the way that you present your work. So I recommend focusing your efforts on your website. And then one thing that I've done that makes a lot, makes a lot of sense to me and has helped me get my work in all the right places is finding photographers who are doing what I want to do and they're getting a lot of work and high paying work. Just Google their name and see all the websites that come up where they are listed. And usually what you'll find is that they have, even on free websites, even on websites that no pros would use, they will have placed their name and work on a great variety of different websites. And what this does is it not only makes it so that if that one-off creative director searches for you using one of these weird search engines, it also tells Google when you have links in lots of different places to your website, it tells you Google that your website is relevant and it improves your appearance in the, in the rankings. So I shouldn't be telling you that because if you do it too, and then everyone does it, then I'm nothing special. And now, now no one's ever going to find my website, but hey, <laughs> maybe what you do is not what I do. And maybe there's enough work for all of us. So um, yeah, I, I uh, have found work through Facebook. Usually that's lower paying work. I've found work for my website. Um, I've never been hired on Instagram, which I think for some photographers is their primary source of work. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong there. I've uh, done a lot of effort. I've, I've made a lot of effort on Instagram to follow the right people, to have hashtags on my photos, to post regularly, to have uh, curated content. I, I've i spent some time researching and trying to understand how to do that well. And I have got some attention there. I've got some people looking at my work there. I just haven't had a big client come and hire me from there. So most of the time when it's something big and valuable, it's directly on my website. They don't tell me how they found me. It's not necessarily so that they just Googled me. They may have found me um, from one of the sites that I'm listed on. I don't know. I usually ask, but they don't always tell. It's not really um, important to them to spend their time telling me how they found me for my marketing purposes. So sometimes it can be kind of out of place to say, okay, before you negotiate price with me, can you tell me how you found me? Sometimes that's going to uh, put them off, especially uh, bigger clients. Those people tend to be busy or they tend to feel like their time is valuable more than um, local people who are more down to earth and sort of not in a big hurry. So anyway, uh, my advice to you, if you're looking to get more work as a commercial photographer, first things first, make sure your portfolio is excellent and that it's presented excellently. Get that down first and then spray that everywhere. Just put it all over the place. Put it on every photographer listing website, locally and nationally, worldwide, whatever. If you're at a point financially where you can afford to invest in something like Workbook, give that a shot. Um, a lot of the best photographers in the world are listed on sites like that, and I'm sure that they're getting work. And I, I would imagine that creative agencies and art buyers are using websites like that, knowing that it's curated and that only people who have thousands and thousands of dollars coming in extra can afford to invest in that kind of marketing. And that means that they're probably successful and capable of what they're doing. So um, if you can get yourself on something like that, maybe that's good. I don't know. Um, I've looked into it. Um, 
but at this point, I my full time job is pretty good, and uh, I do some stuff on the side that I'm proud of, and um, maybe when I have so much extra money that. I'm ready to make a big investment into my marketing, then I'll go that direction too, but we'll see. Now, what about having an agent? Well, I've looked into this extensively too. And what I've learned about this is there's mixed advice out there. If you ask an agent in an interview or whatever, if you ask them what they're looking for in a photographer when they're taking people on, They'll almost universally say that they're looking for somebody who already makes a lot of money, already has a ton of clients, um, and is bringing that value to the agency. Well, of course, they make their money on commission as a percentage of whatever money's coming in. So if you're an agent, why wouldn't you want a photographer who already makes a lot of money and doesn't need you? And just instantly you've just added a great deal of income to your life. I mean, obviously, obviously that would be great. From photographers, you're more likely to hear, well, I'm not getting enough work. I wish I had an agent who could market me and bring clients to me. I need an agent who has connections with big brands or production houses who will bring that value to me because I've got great work. I've got skills. I know what I'm doing. And all I need is that interface with those people that I don't have access to. Well, of course, a photographer would love to have no clients and then have somebody come and bless them with a career. These are the two sides. This is the advice that you hear, and this, these are the questions that we're asking as photographers. But what's the truth? What really happens? Well, I think that there's some of each that really happens. I know personally someone who had no career, had great work, had good crew and just on his credit card booked flights around the country to visit certain agencies that he was interested in showed them his work in person they were impressed at his initiative and they brought him on so it happens it can happen i i don't necessarily recommend doing that i personally don't do things on debt um, which is one reason why things have gone a little slower for me but i feel secure um, and, and I value that. So as far as the debt thing, you know, be careful with that. But the point is he didn't have a big roster of clients. He just had good skills. He had a good personality for sales and he went out and introduced himself and they were impressed with him. So if you got a good personality, you're likable, your work is great. Uh, he also hired a photo consultant who looked through his portfolio, helped him narrow it down, tighten it up, and get it all ready to go before he went and showed it. So it wasn't just a spontaneous thing. This guy really did his research and really did some planning and invested in what he wanted to achieve. And it has worked out greatly for him. He's, he's uh, now more of a film director and does commercials, national commercials and things. He's doing great. So yeah, he's a guy with a lot of initiative. Uh, he's intelligent. He is good at networking, he's very likable. On the other hand, I, I do think that there are agencies that are so successful that there's not really much value for them in, in doing that for someone, bringing on a newer photographer like that. Um, but even in those cases, there are stories that I've heard in my research where they just saw a lot of potential in somebody and they believed that um, there was something about their work that was would be valued in the market and that they could um, benefit from as an agent. So I don't know. I I don't have an agent, and I haven't. I don't have personal experience really with it. Um, but uh, I know for some people it's really great, and for some people it's much more about okay, I'm a photographer and I'm so busy and I have so many emails and so many people asking for bids that I can't keep up with it all. And I need somebody to help manage it all for me so I can focus on what I do well. And that would be a great problem to have. As my portfolio and experience grow and my marketing improves, if I'm discovered by a large client, you know, it happens from time to time, if they see my work, they like what they see, they have confidence that I can produce, I'm happy to work with them. Um, 
but at the same time, I'm not willing to set aside everything else in my life to make it happen. So just uh, different people, different strokes for different folks. Um, so an agency might not be right for you if you're just looking to get clients initially. Uh, you might waste a lot of time trying to impress agents um, when you should be just tightening up your work and posting it all over the internet. Uh, you can try running ads. Um, you know, there's there's some success to be had with that. It's a little bit cheaper than some other options. But anyway, I think that the best photographers, the ones that get the most work, also do the most, uh, also have the greatest variety of marketing efforts. So if you have any more questions, if, if this uh, didn't cover everything, feel free to write in the comments any other uh, things that have worked for you. I'd love to hear. Uh, I'm not perfect. I'm not uh, number one in the world. I'm not really trying to be. So, but I'm still interested to learn and grow. And if you have had success, um, you know, let me know what worked for you. I'd love to hear it. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe and I'll have more content coming your way as I receive more questions. If you have questions about other content, just go ahead and ask. Maybe I'll make a video, explain my perspective on it, and I'll see you next time.